Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you're new here, my name is Melissa and I'm a nursing student. So today I'm going to be talking about a software called eDapt. No, this is not a sponsorship. If you attend Chamberlain University, you probably know exactly what eDapt is. It's an online software that is used as a learning tool and I did try to research eDapt. So according to stuff that I found online, eDapt is an online software that provides a personalized learning dashboard that empowers learners to study at their own pace in or beyond a classroom setting. eDapt follows a unique digital, digital they made up a word, it's physical plus digital model that aims to equip learners to adopt to challenges put forward by the fourth industrial revolution. Okay, so I don't know if other schools are using eDapt. I know that Chamberlain is. They slowly implemented it across campuses. I attend Chamberlain University in Northern Virginia, the Tyson's Corner campus, and I have been using eDapt for a few sessions, and I'm a part of a Facebook group online for students at Chamberlain all throughout the country, and they're in this Facebook group. And there have been a lot of people discussing eDapt. I could not see whether or not it was used at other schools, but I do know that by now, by the time I've been making this video, I'm pretty sure that every campus at Chamberlain does use eDapt, I think. It's really hard just because the software is so new and there's not too much online about it. But eDapt has been very controversial, I found, I think. I don't know if that's dramatic to say. I have seen people complaining about eDapt, people saying eDapt is not that bad, people praising eDapt. There were a couple of petitions going out last year to eradicate eDapt from Chamberlain's curriculum. I signed the petition, I'm not gonna lie. I'm going to be as unbiased with this video as I possibly can. And to be honest, last year I was very against eDapt. And now I have changed my attitude toward eDapt. I still don't like it or love it really, but I have a theory for why I don't like it, why a lot of people don't like it, and why some people either don't mind it or they love it. But before I'm gonna get into that theory, I'm gonna go over the pros and cons of eDapt. And for the sake of time, I'm not going to go into full detail on what eDapt is. If you don't know what it is, I'll just give you a really quick overview. Like I said, it's a learning tool, and I know that my definition at the beginning of the video was very vague, but it's essentially kind of like, if you're familiar with what ATI is, it's a similar setup just in the sense that it is a web page that has multiple modules. So every class that you take, you sign into eDapt, and you have, let's just say, maybe 10 modules, for 10 weeks of classes and week one you go into your week one modules and you have a list of different kind of activities that you have to do so you have to read through some stuff and take quizzes at the end of it and I know that if you, if you know what eDapt is then that's probably a pretty horrible description but if you have no idea what it is hopefully that description helps you a little bit and you can kind of go on your own and research exactly what it is but if you don't know what it is and if your school is not using it and they're not going to use it, then you probably don't need to watch this video. This is for people that either know what eDapt is because they use it or they're getting familiar with what eDapt is because they are going to be using it in the near future. So my first pro of the eDapt program is that it allegedly helps with the new NCLEX. So for those of you that don't know, the NCLEX is changing its formatting of questions, and the NCLEX is pretty much just changing in 2023. So anybody that's graduating in 2022 or early, well really that's this year, anybody that's graduating this year does not have to worry about these changes, but if you're graduating, I believe in 2023, three or beyond, then you will have to take the new NCLEX or the new style of NCLEX. And so this program is supposed to help with that. A lot of people have been freaking out, for lack of a better term, at the fact that the NCLEX is changing just because it's new. And so a lot of professors, a lot of schools, different programs are trying to prepare students to be able to take and pass this exam. To be completely honest, personally, I'm not too worried about the NCLEX changing 
just because I've never taken the NCLEX, I've never seen the NCLEX. So in 2024 is when I'm going to be taking it. When I go in and take it in 2024, I don't have anything to compare it to. Whether the NCLEX stays the same or it changes, when I sit to take it for the first time, it will all be new to me. But the major thing that I keep hearing about EDAPT from my professors and online is that it is supposed to prepare students for the new NCLEX. And if that is the case, if NCLEX style questions or if NCLEX questions are going to be formatted the same way that EDAPT is, then that is a huge pro of the program and it is very beneficial to nursing students. So another pro of EDAPT is that it can boost your grade. So you have these EDAPT assignments that you have to do every week in some classes. I had to do EDAPT assignments when I was taking anatomy and physiology three and four at Chamberlain. And each week I had to do my homework assignments through EDAPT and they were graded and they counted towards my grade. So if you are getting nothing but A's on all of your EDAPT assignments, those can add up and benefit your final grade in whatever class that you are taking. Another pro or just positive aspect of EDAPT is that it can be used as a great study tool. So in addition to doing your regular homework assignments, when you are assigned to EDAPT, you do, before you take quizzes on EDAPT, you do have to read through it. So it's really interesting. It's kind of like different slides that you have to read through and you learn about the material before you are able to be quizzed on it. And again, I'm sorry if I'm not describing it very well. Please feel free to do your own research and look at the formatting of EDAPT, the program of EDAPT. But if you are familiar with the program, then hopefully you know what I'm talking about. It can be used as a really great study tool in addition to your textbook. So another pro of EDAPT is that you do get different images than your textbook. In anatomy and physiology, imagery and visualization very important because they are literally half of what the course entails. You need to know the structure and function and visualization and images are the structure. So it kind of helps you out because when you're taking the exam and even when you're on the field, it's good to have just a knowledge of what different images of the same structure look like, if that makes sense. And EDAPT is really good for that because there were a lot of pictures in EDAPT that were not in my textbook and vice versa. So it really is good for giving you a broader idea of what these structures are for anatomy and physiology. For the most part, those are all of the pros that I could think of with EDAPT. But even though there are only a few pros that I'm listing, those pros are pretty big. Getting practice for the NCLEX and getting preparation for the new NCLEX is huge and even if that was all that EDAPT was able to accomplish, I feel like that is a pro in and of itself for why EDAPT is a good learning tool to use. And then in addition to that, it does give you practice with different concepts and knowledge, whereas you may not be spending your time doing that. EDAPT is kind of a way for like additional homework or additional study time that's kind of forced upon you. So it's not fun, but it can be very beneficial. And then again, it does give you different visualizations and different wordings for concepts that are in your book that your professors are teaching you, but it's kind of just giving you a different point of view. So that can also be very helpful. Now getting into the cons of EDAPT, and in my opinion, there are a lot more cons, but my cons may not be cons for everybody, or you know, even though there are more cons for you, the pros might outweigh the cons, and I'm going to get into that later. But the first con, and probably the biggest con, is that it is extremely time consuming. So if you have used the EDAP software before, then you know that at the beginning of each section in each module, they predict how long it will take you to complete that section. And it never takes, at least for me, it never takes that amount of time. So a section of a module in EDAPT can predict that it'll take 25 minutes to complete. And then when I actually go in and do the section, it took me about two hours to complete. And so if you are dealing with a module that has eight to 10 sections, and each of those sections are saying it's gonna take you only 
30 minutes to complete and it actually takes you two hours to complete each. That's a lot of time to dedicate, in my opinion, to just one learning tool on top of having to go to the classroom, on top of having to go to labs if you're taking a class with labs, on top of having to study for exams, and on top of your other courses. Because as far as I know, EDAP did not replace anything. It was not like you had weekly assignments at Chamberlain and EDAP just replaced those assignments. You still have your regular assignments and then you also have EDAP. EDAP was kind of like an addition to the work that was already on students' plates. So if you're spending that much time just doing EDAP, which really is not a lot of points, it can be a lot. It can honestly be just a lot. And I think that that is the biggest issue that I saw with people online complaining about the program just how time consuming it is. Another major con to the EDAP software is that there are a lot of glitches in the system. And I mean anything from grammatical errors to spelling errors, which there are a lot, to you taking quizzes within EDAP, you getting the answer correct, but the system marks you as wrong. And that can also be frustrating because that then impacts your grade. And I've seen a lot of things online like within Chamberlain forums and on the Facebook group saying that if you take a picture of your right answer that was marked wrong, you can show it to your professor and they will adjust your score. And the problem that I found with that was I don't know when the system is going to mark something correct as wrong. So I would have to be taking pictures of all of my answers before I press submit, hoping that in the event that it marks it wrong when it's actually right, I can then go dispute it with my professor. It's honestly just a lot and it's kind of crazy to me that this program was launched, that Chamberlain decided to implement it and they did not fix these errors. I did not have to deal with EDOP this past session that I was in, but I'm going to be dealing with it the next session that I'm going into. So I'm hoping that within these last two months, maybe some of the glitches within EDAPT were fixed, but it just seems very unprofessional and just not really a great learning tool if it's going to have these glitches and especially if it's going to have grammatical errors and spelling errors because there are certain classes, a lot of classes really, anatomy and physiology is one, Pharmacology is probably another one, patho is another one, where spelling really does matter because there could be things that are spelled similar and just all it takes is a couple letters being off to mean something completely different and just, just being detrimental to your learning. Another con with the system is that, and this is a personal con, I feel like it is busy work. Like I mentioned before, this is not a software that is optional, it's mandatory and it's not a software that was implemented to replace schoolwork, it's in addition to other schoolwork. So it's very time consuming and honestly it just feels like busy work just for the sake of being busy and I'm not sure what the logic behind that is but that's what it feels like to me and I know that's what it feels like to a lot of other students. Another con, again this one is my opinion, most of the cons are just my opinions, but another con is that I feel like it forces students to learn or it tries to force students to learn a certain way. I am a very hands-on learner and I'm also a visual learner and that is just how I learn best. So to be honest, I can learn more and absorb more information watching a like Khan Academy video or a video online where I'm seeing somebody draw out different diagrams and kind of showing the different ways that the body works or an animation. I love um, Amoeba Sisters but I'm really good with stuff like that so I often go on YouTube and a 10 minute video about how the body works, like an animated 10 minute video, will teach me more than if I spent two or three hours just sitting down and reading my textbook. And in my opinion, EDAPT is kind of like a form of just sitting down and reading my textbook. So it's not the best way for me personally to learn. A major con is that it can negatively impact, like seriously negatively impact your grade. So one of the pros I mentioned was that it could help boost your grade a little bit. A con is that it can also help plummet your grade. So if you are knocking out EDAPT, you're getting 100% every week, then yes, that is a good way to kind of inch your grade up a little bit in a course. However, I don't think I've ever gotten 100% on EDAPT. There's so many different reasons for that. 
One is just getting 100% would mean going through all the modules and getting absolutely no questions wrong, which is already difficult in and of itself. But even if I have done that, sometimes, like I mentioned with the glitch in the system, you can get a question correct and it will mark it as wrong, preventing you from getting 100%. So it is actually easier than you would think to do poorly on EDAPT in a week and if you do well, it inches up your grade, like it'll help your grade a tiny bit. And as with most things, if you do poorly, your grade can plummet. So it can be the difference between you getting an A or a B in a class or a B and a C in a class. So my analysis of the EDAP software is that it can be very beneficial for people. It can help you retain information, learn information in nursing school, or it can just kind of be a waste of time. It could be busy work and it could really not help you learn that well. And it's just unfortunately another hurdle that you have to jump over just so that you can get your degree and eventually be able to sit for your boards and become a registered nurse. I think that if you are somebody who can sit down read a textbook cover to cover and retain all of that information. If that is how you learn best, I feel like you may not have as hard of a time with the EDAP software as some did. I'm starting to realize, or at least theorize, that everybody just has different learning styles. And my theory is that the way that you view EDAP, whether you view it as beneficial or you just view it as busy work, will probably just come down to what your learning style is. After I sit and take and, by the grace of God, pass the NCLEX, I will eventually make another video to let you know, like if EDAPT is even still a thing at that point, because I feel like it's one of those things that may just come and go. But if it's still a thing, then I will sit down and make a video on whether or not I did find it helpful for the NCLEX. And if I do take the NCLEX and find that I felt more comfortable taking the NCLEX because of EDAPT, then in my opinion that alone will make it worth it but until then i'm just seeing it as another thing that i have to do to graduate so if you love edapt please comment down below and be honest and tell me why you do or why you find it beneficial if you hate the software or you hate the program also comment down below and let me know why you don't like it also just let me know your learning style because i'm always very curious what a majority of nursing students learning style is but if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.